Today in our 2008 Ford Ranger, we're going to be installing the Deconcha Prodigy P3 brake controller, part number 90195, along with the e-trailer brake controller install kit, part number ETB-C7. To start, we'll first go ahead and assemble the 7-pole adapter bracket. With the hardware provided, we'll use it to attach the bracket to the 7-pole adapter. We'll go ahead and take the bracket, feed it over the wires, and up to the back of the mounting surface for the 7-pole adapter. Then we'll take the screws, feed them through the front side of the 7-pole, and secure it with the nuts on the back side. Once we have all four in place, we'll go ahead and tighten them down. Now, once we have the bracket mounted, to help secure our wires and clean up our install look, we're going to go ahead and tape it up here until we get to the four pole connector. Using some black electrical tape, it'll help bundle it up and protect our wires. You could also use the wire loom provided with the install kit. Note, the purple wire is for a reverse taillight circuit that will not be installed on this application. So we're just going to cut it off short in case we ever add it later and tape it up. Now we're ready to install the tow ready no drill mounting bracket, part number 18140. We'll use the hardware provided with the bracket to secure it to our 7 pole bracket. Now we can go ahead and mount the bracket directly to the hitch. We'll use the worm gear clamp provided with the install kit of the bracket to secure it to the hitch. Now once we have the bracket secured, we'll go ahead and start wiring up our connectors. We're going to start with our two four pole connectors. First the four pole connector here on the vehicle side. And then the four pole connector coming from the back of our new seven pole connector. Note, I do recommend to use the Edelman dielectric grease in between these two connection points to help prevent corrosion. We'll just put some grease inside the connector and push the two together. We'll go ahead and remove the cap because it won't be necessary anymore and to get it out of the way. Next, we'll need to hook up the blue and black wire coming from our 7-pole connector. To hook it up, we're going to utilize the gray duplex cable provided with our install kit. We'll strip back the sheathing and then strip back the wires inside. To remove the gray sheathing, we're just going to use our utility knife and carefully split it down the middle, exposing the wires underneath. Just going to go ahead and remove the excess to get it out of my way. And then we'll strip back the wires. Try and keep our color code as closely as possible. We'll attach black to black and white to blue. Now with those connections made, I'm going to continue wrapping up our wiring harness with some black electrical tape. This will help protect our open connections and keep the two four pole connectors together clean and dry from dirt, dust, debris, or moisture. Now with our wiring harness taped up, I'm going to go ahead and start routing the gray duplex cable through the frame following the manufacturer's wiring. Quick tech tip, as you route your wiring, recommend to stay away from any moving components such as steering or suspension or excessive heat such as the exhaust. Keep in mind as I route the wire, I'm also going to secure it as necessary with the black zip ties provided with the install kit. Next, I'm going to take the white wire with the pre-attached ring terminal and ground it here to the frame of the vehicle 
Using the self-tapping screw provided with their install kit, we'll go ahead and secure the ring terminal now. Now with my wiring routed and secured here at the back of the vehicle, we're gonna go ahead and take the remaining portion of our gray duplex cable and run it up towards the front of the vehicle and ultimately to the top of the engine compartment. Now we're gonna be going through the manufacturer's shift cable grommet. So if you follow the shift cable up the firewall, you'll locate the grommet. We can utilize the manufacturer's grommet here to run our wiring inside the cab. Taking a utility knife, we can cut the grommet just large enough to get our wires through and into the cab of the vehicle. Now we can move back underneath the vehicle. We'll take our gray duplex cable, run it up to the grommet, mark our length, bring it back down, and then we'll need to add some additional length. We'll carefully slice the gray duplex cable down the middle. Then once we get to the other end, cut it off and remove the sheathing. Now that we've got it stripped back, we'll go ahead and remove the sheathing. Go to the other end of our white wire only and cut it. This is the end that will go inside the cab of the vehicle. I'm gonna go ahead and run it now. Now that I've got the white wire started in the cab of the vehicle, take the other end of my gray duplex cable and run it up to the top of the engine compartment. Note, to assist in routing any of your wires, you can also use a pull wire, which could be a stiff piece of wire, coat hanger, or even a piece of old air tubing, which we're gonna be using. Once we get the duplex cable taped to our pull wire, we can move to the top of the engine compartment where we can pull the duplex cable up to the top of the engine, and then move inside and pull our white wire into the cab of the vehicle. Now, with our white wire pulled into the cab of the vehicle, we'll move back to the engine compartment. Now, here's our gray duplex cable that we use our pull wire to route to the top of the engine compartment. We're gonna mount the breakers for our new brake control install kit here below the body seam of the fender. So we'll need a little more length for our black power wire. I'll go ahead and strip back the gray duplex cable to give us some more working room. We'll cut off the extra from our black power wire. We'll use the 40 amp breaker supplied with our install kit for the hot lead to our seven pole connector. Now once we have the breaker mounted, we can go ahead and strip back our power wire that supplies the hot lead to the seven pole connector. Install a small ring terminal and crimp it down. We'll then secure it to the silver side of our breaker as the copper side will be the hot lead from the breaker to the positive battery post. To secure the ring terminal to the breaker, we'll use the star washer and nut provided. The second one will be the power supply for our brake controller. We'll use the 20 amp breaker for this application. Next, we'll go ahead and run the power and ground for the brake controller. We'll use the remaining wire from our gray duplex cable, push it through the grommet from inside out into the engine compartment, where it'll ultimately run to our breaker and a battery or vehicle ground. Now with our wires run in the cab of the vehicle, it's a good time to mount the brake controller. To mount our brake controller, we'll use the self-tapping screws and bracket provided with the brake controller. We're gonna attach the 
brake controller bracket directly to the knee bolster here on the passenger side of our steering wheel. Now before I mount the brake controller to the bracket, we'll install the pigtail into the back of the brake controller. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up with some black electrical tape before I install it. By wrapping up with the black electrical tape, it'll help clean up our install look, bundle our wires together, provide a little protection for the wires. We don't have to go all the way, but we will go about three quarter. Make sure we've got enough to get our wiring behind the dash and out of sight. This is another area you could also use the wire loom provided with the install kit. Next, we'll take the brake controller pigtail and plug it into the back of the brake controller. Then we can mount our brake controller using the pre-drilled slots in the bracket and our brake controller. Now with the brake controller mounted, we can go ahead and start making our connections with the brake controller pigtail. We'll start with the red wire. The red wire will need to attach directly to the manufacturer's brake switch signal that is hot only when the brake pedal is depressed. Using our test light, we can identify this wire. I'll ground the test light directly to the firewall, then back probe the brake switch. With the key ignition on, Our pin probed, as we press on the brake pedal, it'll trigger our wire. This will be our brake switch signal that will attach to the red wire. To attach our red wire to the manufacturer's wire, we'll need to remove some of the black electrical tape that has it bundled up. I'll separate it out a little, slide the quick splice connector over the manufacturer's wire and then the red wire into position. Once in place, we'll go ahead and crimp it down. Once we have it crimped down, we'll close the clasp and that'll complete our connection. With the three remaining wires from our brake controller pigtail, we'll start with the blue wire. The blue wire will match the blue wire that comes from our seven pole connector and is the power to our trailer braking. The white wire is the one we attached to the blue wire at the seven pole connector and ultimately ran into the cabin of the vehicle. I'm going to go ahead and trim off some of the excess from both sides of the wire, strip back both wires, and use one of the butt connectors provided with the install kit to attach them together. Next, we'll take the gray duplex cable that was left over from our seven pole connector run, strip back and expose the black and white wires underneath and utilize them for power and ground, matching color for color from the brake controller pigtail. Now with the gray duplex cable exposed and stripped back, I'll go ahead and strip back the wires coming from the brake controller pigtail, and then use the butt connectors provided to secure them to our gray duplex cable wiring. Now with all our connections made here in the engine compartment, we can go ahead and finish wrapping up our wires with some black electrical tape to cover up our connection points to help keep them free from dirt, dust, debris, and moisture. Additionally, we'll secure the wiring as necessary up underneath the dash and then move back to the engine compartment. Now that we're back in the engine compartment, we'll take our gray duplex cable, that's the power and ground for our brake controller, and route it to its longest point, which will be here at the manufactured ground. Then I'll go ahead and mark the wire and cut off the excess. Holding in position, we'll again mark where the power wire will need to go to our brake controller and strip back the gray duplex cable, separating the white and black wires. We'll remove the excess sheathing 
Then take the white wire, strip it back, and add a large ring terminal. Now we'll go ahead and remove the ground stud. Install the ring terminal, then re-secure the manufacturer's ground stud. Then I'll take my power wire, mark my length, strip it back, and add a small ring terminal, creating our power wire for our brake controller, and again attaching it to the silver side of the breaker, securing it with the star washer and nut. We'll use our remaining wire left over from the gray duplex cable for the copper side of our breakers to the positive battery terminal. We'll take both ends of our hot lead runs, strip them back, and add small ring terminals. You can then take those ring terminals and attach them to the copper side of each breaker. We'll go ahead and secure it with the star washer and nut and then tighten down all four posts of our breakers. Then we'll take the remaining portion of our power wire, route the two hot leads following the manufacturer's wiring to our positive battery post where we can cut it to length and add two large ring terminals. Now we're ready to attach our ring terminals to the positive battery post. However, the nut on the positive battery post stud is not designed to come all the way off. We'll back it off enough that we can get our ring terminals in after we cut a small slice in the ring terminal. Just enough to fit over the stud. We'll do this to both ring terminals. Once we have them cut, we'll slide them onto the stud and then we can tighten it back down. Once we have the power wires attached, we can put our positive battery post cap back into place. Once you're finished making your connections, we'll go ahead and secure the wiring as necessary with the zip ties and then cut off the excess from the zip ties to clean up the install look. Now with all our wires connected and secured, we can see we have power going to our brake controller. As we plug in our trailer brakes, we can see we have a trailer brake connection. Then when we remove the trailer brake connector from our seven pole, we'll get an NC showing no trailer connection. Now we know our new brake controller works, we're ready to hit the road. And that does it for the install of the Takancha Prodigy P3 brake controller, part number 90195, in conjunction with the e-trailer brake controller install kit, part number ETB C7, on our 2008 Ford Ranger.